Tesla Barbarians back, and today we're going to be doing a review of Tesla's standard autopilot. Not enhanced autopilot, not full cell driving, just what you get for free when you buy the car. Alright, Tesla Barbarians back. Here we are. We're going to do an autopilot test today. I only have the standard autopilot. I don't have enhanced autopilot, I don't have the full self driving, so I've got the regular stock standard autopilot, and we're about to do a test on the highway, then we'll do a test on city streets. When you use autopilot to activate it, you use the gear shift stalk and push it down twice. If you push it down once, you get a single chime and it activates adaptive cruise control. When you acti activate adaptive cruise control, if you look on the screen here, you'll see Here's your speed that changes as you change speed, of course. And then there is the speed limit as seen by the, the front camera that's reading the, uh, the speed limit signs. And it also has GPS information as well. But right here where it says max, that is the set speed that adaptive cruise control will go to as a max. So by rolling the right side scroll wheel, you can increase that speed. So right now, the speed limit is 60, I've got it set on 69, as a nod to Elon, 69 max, and the adaptive cruise control, I take my foot off of it, it will keep it at a maximum of 69. But if the vehicle in front of me starts to slow down and it goes 65, 64, 59, whatever it is, the adaptive cruise control will reduce my speed in order to adapt to the car in front of me. In settings, you can set one car length, two car lengths, or three car lengths as the minimum distance between you and the car in front of me. I've got it set at three car lengths. So right now, the vehicle has reduced my speed to 67 because the vehicle in front of me has gone slower. But it's adaptive cruise control. Like I said, one single chime, adaptive cruise control, I'm still controlling the steering wheel. To activate autopilot, you hit the gear stalk down twice. You get two chimes. And now if you look on the screen, you'll see that the lane has been highlighted in blue. It's outlined in blue. Now the car is taking over all the steering. We're on the highway right now. I still set the maximum speed. So the warning comes up, please keep your hands on the steering wheel. I just keep my hands here nearby it, just lightly on it. I'm not, I'm not doing anything to control it. The car is taking care of it for me. Now, this is standard autopilot, so if I want to change lanes, I signal. If it was enhanced autopilot, the car would change lanes for me. But because this is standard autopilot, I turn the steering wheel, you get the single chime to let you know that you've come out of autopilot, but you're in adaptive cruise control still. Turn the, the uh, turn signal off, hit the gear stalk down twice again, you get your two chimes, outline blue on the lane, and we're back in autopilot. For me, on the highway, I enjoy using the autopilot. It takes some of the, the stress and pressure off of the, off of the drive for me. I make sure that I keep looking forward. The interior camera is watching me to make sure that I keep looking forward. If I start taking my eyes off the road, it will insist on me putting input into the steering wheel much more often than if I wasn't. Also, if you do something real dumb, like grab your phone and hold it up in front of your face. All right, so if you look here, it's saying apply slight turning to the steering wheel. I apply a slight amount of turning pressure and that warning goes away now. It's wanting to make sure that I'm paying attention. But if you do something stupid like hold your phone straight up in front of your face, it will immediately start flashing, apply turning to the steering wheel. If you do that a couple of times during a trip, it'll cut you off like a bartender. You're cut off. You don't get any more autopilot this drive. So again, right now, I've got it set to 69 miles an hour max, and it is actually accelerating because there's more space between me and the vehicle in front of me. It wants me to put input into the steering wheel. I put the input in, the warning goes away. <coughs> it stays in the lane. As the highway turns and curves, it makes those changes, and you'll actually be able to see the steering wheel turn as it happens. So we just passed by an on-ramp where a lot of cars were merging on. I put my hand on the steering wheel just because I wanted to see how autopilot was going to behave and handle it perfectly. It allowed cars to, to merge in um, reasonably in front of us and behind us. And um, as one merged in a little close in front of us, it reduced the speed of the vehicle 
didn't do anything squirrely, no alerts, no screaming, no crying. It just handled it the way that a, that a normal driver would. So now we're going to talk about using autopilot on a back road. We're on this back road over here. Turn on the autopilot. We are not on a highway. When you're not on the highway, when you go to change the max speed, it will not let you go faster than five miles over the speed limit as your max speed. When you're on a back road, side street, or a city street. On the highway, you can go up higher. And actually, you and your safety settings can set the limit that you want. Also, when you're on a side street, a back road, I've noticed that it requests for you to put input into the steering wheel much more often to make sure that you're paying close attention to what's going on on the road. It's called autopilot, but it's just a name. All right, so here we are on what is still considered a city street or a side street, even though this is a main thoroughfare. Speed limit's a little bit higher, and there's a bit more traffic on it, but I want to go ahead and demonstrate it because of the fact that this is a bit of a windier road. It's got some more curves, a little bit more um, interesting stuff that can get thrown at the autopilot. So again, because it's still a city street, it will not allow me to increase the maximum speed above 50 miles an hour, uh, which is five miles an hour above the speed limit. Now autopilot does not react to stop signs or stop lights. Uh, the adaptive cruise control will respond to um, traffic jams. So if you've got cars in front of you and the, the cars there's a traffic jam and the cars stop and then go again and they creep, traffic is creeping, it'll respond to that so you don't have to do any of that. Uh, but you do still have to pay attention, keep your hand on the wheel, uh, because that's adaptive cruise control. It's not going to do the steering for you. We come around this curve here. It, it splits into three lanes. Autopilot, the screen, you can see that on the, on the FSD visualization that it is uh, recognizing the, the three lanes. It requests me to put input in. I put input in. And it's seeing everything that's around us. This actually, this is considered an FSD beta visualization. Um, when I turned this on, it was an option for me to turn on the visualization for FSD beta. Uh, and when I turned it on, I had to, you know, tap on all these disclaimers agreeing that I understand that I have to pay attention, that this is just a visualization, it's not activating full self-driving, uh, and that these are all driver assist features. They don't replace me paying attention. So when it comes to the standard autopilot, I love it when it comes to driving on the highway. It takes the stress out, it makes it a really relaxed, enjoyable drive. Side streets, city streets, I try and avoid it because it gets a little panicky, a little squirrely. But for the highway, I think it's fantastic. We'll see you guys in the next battle.